It's Saturday, October 30th, 2010, and welcome to a late episode of This Week in Linux. Let's start things off by wrapping up the Ubuntu Developer Summit news. In one of the last sessions at UDS, they talked about package selections for 11.04. Some of the proposed changes include replacing Rhythmbox with Banshee as the default player, Firefox 4 being the default browser, barring any problems with Firefox 4, some new enhancements coming to Ubuntu's OneConf application for Ubuntu One, OpenOffice will tentatively be replaced with LibreOffice, GNOME Dictionary and the Remote Desktop Tool TS Client will tentatively be dropped, and Nautilus Elementary, though it was pushed up to be in the default selection, was actually pushed out because they say that the patches are not quite up to the standard of Ubuntu. Moving on to some virus-related information that might actually affect you. A virus has been propagating through Facebook called KubeFace, which is an anagram of Facebook, and it actually works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Now don't get too worried about it just yet, it requires you to open a message from someone, go to a link in that message that looks like YouTube, open up a video on that page, which is not actually a video, but a Java applet, and then allow that Java applet to actually run. So unless you are completely stupid, and I don't mean to offend anybody by that, but unless you're completely stupid, you should be okay. In addition, it turns out Linux may not have been one of the initial targets for this. After a security researcher at Pareto Logic took a look at the code for KubeFace, they found out that it actually only targets Windows and Mac. It's just because Java is so cross-platform compatible, it works on Linux as well. Now the good thing about Linux is it does not allow it to automatically run on startup, and the fact that they did not force it to automatically run on startup on Linux goes to show that they weren't actually targeting us. Moving right along and yet going back just a little bit, we mentioned Firefox 4 is supposed to be included in Ubuntu 11.04. Well, as it turns out, the final release date for Firefox 4 has been pushed back to the beginning of 2011. Going along with that, they've decided they're going to be having 10 beta releases, the last one being the beginning of December. So hopefully by the beginning of 2011 we should have Firefox 4, otherwise Ubuntu is going to be on 3.6 Firefox. And let's move on to a little bit of release news. This week, Mego version 1.1 officially released. At the same time, they released a new Core Edition, Netbook Edition, In-Vehicle Edition, a Handset Edition, and the SDK to go along with all of them. I think we talked briefly about Mego 1.1 before, but basically there's a new kernel, there's a new Xorg version, an updated version of Qt, an updated web runtime, basically a lot of updated software. I'm not sure if there are a whole lot of really new features to it, but go ahead and give it a look if you want. In addition, as mentioned previously, Jolly Cloud version 1.1 will be releasing soon, and a pre-release should be available even sooner. With this pre-release, they've gone ahead and synced up with Ubuntu Lucid, so they should have much more up-to-date packages. They've got a newer kernel, version 2.6.35.4, a newer version of Xorg, a newer version of GNOME itself, and they're using Slim instead of GDM now to do the login sequence, in addition to various and sundry other software updates included with it. However, the big news is not that Jolly Cloud 1.1 is going to release. The big news is that they could be making Jolly Cloud based netbooks in the near future. Now, there's nothing official confirmed or anything, but Tariq Kim, the CEO of Jolly Cloud, actually tweeted out a couple of pictures that had some very interesting things. Now, it's not clear if this is going to be overshadowed by Chrome OS when it actually releases, but would you buy a Jolly Cloud based netbook if they did come out, and what price would it have to be? Let me know in the comments below. And let's finish things up by talking a little bit about Android. Now, there hasn't been anything official released from Google yet, but sources are saying that Gingerbread may actually be done, and they may not be calling it Android 3.0, it may be 2.3, pushing the Honeycomb release to be the 3.0 version instead. Now what makes these sources think that gingerbread is done? The Android developers channel on YouTube shows a video of a giant gingerbread man being delivered to Google headquarters. Now of course there are a slew of new features that are supposed to be included in gingerbread. I've talked about all of them before, but basically WebM support, better copy and paste functionality, possibly even the ability to stream content to the device itself from the user's PC. And of course a completely revamped UI that's supposed to make the cell phone manufacturers not want to include their own. And of course, to finish things up, I have to give a big congratulations to Google and to the Android Marketplace and community itself. They've just reached 100,000 apps in the Android Marketplace. So congratulations, give yourself a big hand. 
But that's all I've got for you today. For all the information on all the stories I talked about, check the show notes, which you can find in the source code below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, check out my second channel where I'm doing a daily vlog. It'll let you know what's happening up to the minute. The channel, of course, is youtube.com slash twilltalks. Come hang out with me in the IRC channel, twill on irc.freenode.net, also available at chat.thisweekinlinux.com. Come see me in the live show tomorrow night, live.thisweekinlinux.com at 9 p.m. Eastern, 1 a.m. UTC. But that's all. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.